Hello, thanks for clicking on the video. This is Lead With Love, my channel. And yesterday I was talking so much about black magic. I guess I was talking about life experiences and things like that, but I forgot to mention an important part of my life. My life, like I grew up in foster care. That's how I grew up. I grew up in foster care. <clears throat> from 15, age 15, to 21, I aged out. I aged out. So when you turn 21, you, you age out. You have to leave. You cannot stay in the group home. Like when you turn 18, you can sign yourself out because you're of age and you can just sign yourself out of foster care. But you have to have somewhere to go. <laughs> you can sign yourself off, out and go to your mom or go to wh whoever you know, but I didn't have a relationship with my mother. Like, I grew up, like, she just didn't want to take care of her children. So we were all sent away. We all have different dads. So she sent us all away, the other kids to their dads. And she sent me and my sister to, to foster care. The agency was called Catholic Guardian Society, CGS. <laughs> inside joke it was we would say can't get shit because that was cgs so can't get shit you can't get shit from cgs so cgs was can't get shit but in reality it's called um catholic guardian society i think now they changed the name they changed the name they must have merged with another company and whatever changed the name but i grew up with it being called catholic guardian society so I was 15 from Brooklyn. Then I had to come to the Bronx because my group home was in the Bronx. So from Brooklyn, living in Sumner houses, <laughs> I had to go to the Bronx. And I was in I was in a private house. I was in a house with eight girls. So we grew up, I had roommates, I had all that. Grew up with structure, grew up with rules, grew up with chores, you got an allowance. Like, I had to finish school, change high schools. I was going to George Wingate High School. I think that school was so bad, I think it closed down. Then I transferred over to the Bronx, went to Kennedy, John F. Kennedy High School. I graduated from there with my diploma. <laughs> with my diploma. And from being in the group home, like I wasn't going to school for like a year and a half. And being in foster care, it was like, you know, I just never had structure, never had rules. I never had guidance. Like I was like, wow, I was just bad. <laughs> I was just bad. But I had, I had guidance. Now I had guidance. I have somebody tell me like how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to behave. And you're not supposed to act this way. You know, whenever we would go out, like, she would dress us up. Like, she would take us shopping, she would buy us clothes, and she would always want us to look our best. Like, you always got to look your best. Whenever you go anywhere, you got to show out. You cannot be going anywhere looking crazy. She would be like, oh, my God, you cannot wear that. Or you, what are you doing? Like, no. Like, she would not. No. <laughs> So I was always with, I was always like that. Like we were all like that. We always took care of ourselves. Like we had to look presentable. We always had to, you know, take care of ourselves, your hygiene and things like that. Like, you know, growing up with my, my mother just never talked to us. So I grew up, you never had those kind of conversations with like mother daughter conversations and telling you about life and what you're supposed to be what you want to do with yourself and things like that like I never had conversations like that with my mother my mother was she was a hoe like she was just with different men like I shouldn't even say that she was a hoe it's like it was like 30 years back and forth to different men like she didn't know who she wanted to be with and it was like 30 years and it was in I think one year I went to a, eight different schools six different schools because she didn't know where she wanted to be I was always moving around like 
we never had a stable place. Like I never had, we were always moving all over the place because of my mother. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna grow up and I am not gonna be like that. So I like being by myself. And it's like, if I'm gonna be in a relationship, I'm not gonna sit here and just have a baby to try to trap a man. You know, I'm gonna have a baby with somebody that I love that I wanna be with. And I stay in the same place. I always stayed in the same place because I wanted to be stable. I always wanted to be stable. I didn't want to be moving all over the place because I couldn't find a stable place or I couldn't take care of myself. And it was like, I grew up like that, not being stable, not having a steady place, going to different schools. And I was like, I didn't want to do that to my children. So that's why... I made sure that I was stable because I didn't want to be unstable. And then being in foster care, it was like it just showed me structure, showed me like how you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to behave, how you're supposed to, you know, it was just structure that I needed because I didn't have guidance. I didn't have nobody teach me nothing. Like, no, I had to learn everything. My mouth was reckless. I was rude. I was nasty. I was, you know. I will argue, I will fight, I, it was everything. But it's like, you know, you have you grow up. <laughs> you grow up and you have to know how to deal with people. Everybody has different personalities. You have to learn how to deal with all that. You have to learn, you just have to learn. Like these are lessons, life lessons. And being in foster care wasn't bad for me because it was something that I needed. Like, I needed, I needed that structure. Like, I needed that guidance. You know, some people go through foster care. They have bad experiences, but I didn't have a bad experience. Like, I actually liked being in, in, in foster care. Like, I didn't want to go back home to my mother because she was never stable. Like, if I went back home to her, like, I didn't know where I was going to be. Like, I didn't know where was she going to go. I didn't know who she was going to be with, like, who I was going to be around. So, I was like, you know what? I think I'd rather <laughs> stay in foster care. So, when my 18th birthday came, I was like, I'm staying. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> and then from there, I went to college. My foster mother helped me with college, Miss Davis. Miss Davis, you know, because being in foster care, like, out of respect, like, we, we didn't call people by their first names <clears throat> it was always miss davis miss duncan miss darby miss washington like that's how we address people i would never call them by their first name because it was it was like disrespectful like that's not <laughs> your name like, that's not how <clears throat> we would address them because they're the ones that's taking care of us so out of respect you would call them by their last name but that's how I grew up, you know? I didn't know how to wash clothes. I didn't know how to do stuff, cook, clean, nothing. Like, being in foster care, I learned how to cook, how to clean, how to wash my clothes. Like, I didn't know how to do none of that. My mother never taught me nothing. Like, I was just out there. Like, I had to learn everything by myself. Like, I didn't have nobody teach me. I had to teach myself. I had to learn from being in foster care, being like thrown out, like being kicked out. And you have to learn on your own. You either take the lesson and learn or you make it even harder for yourself. And I didn't want to be transferred or kicked out of the house and be moving all different all different houses because I couldn't get along in the one house. So I was like, you know what, let me just make this my home and I stayed in the same in the same group home I stayed there for six years because I was there from 15 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 six years seven years I was there and I didn't want to be all I didn't want to be in different places because that's how I was with my mother and I didn't want to be like that I wanted to be stable I wanted one place and I wanted it to be my home. But, you know, it's the government. It's the government system. I was a ward of the state. So once I turned 21, I aged out. And I had to go back, go back 
to my mother. <laughs> I had to go back to her because I had nowhere to go. And, you know, I moved out soon after. But, you know, being in, in the group home, like the group home girls, like the people I grew up with, like those girls, the, they're my family. Like they're my sisters. Like we grew up together. Like we, st I love them. I still love them. I will still help them. I will still be there for them. You know, I won't drop nobody's name because, you know, I'm on YouTube and everybody sees this. But, you know, I just had to say that because I did not mention the most important part of my life. My, the most important part of my life was being in foster care. Like, I grew up in foster care. I did not grow up in a household with a silver spoon in my mouth. And, no, I grew up in foster care. Like, nobody wanted me. <laughs> like, my mother didn't want me. She did not want to take care of me. I did not have responsibility. Like, you know, it was hell. Like, if you're rebellious and then you go to a place and you have all this structure, all this discipline, like, I had to learn all of that because I didn't have structure. I didn't have discipline. I had bad habits. I was in everything. And then it's like, it comes to a point where you grow up, <laughs> you grow up and you're like, you know, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to be another stereotype. I don't want to have, you know, I talk to people today. They would never think, oh, you was in foster care. I'd be like, yeah, like it's nothing. It's okay. Like it's not that bad. It was not bad for me. You know, other people have different experiences, but I didn't have a, a bad experience. Like, I still go, I still speak to the girls I grew up with. We had a reunion not too long ago, and we all met up with each other. It was it was nice to, to catch up, you know, to all the girls that we grew up with. It was nice. I just wanted to talk about how I, how I grew up. I was not into my spirituality when I was in foster care. Because, you know, it was like I was just trying to, I was just trying to grow up. <laughs> like, I was just trying to be a teenager, like, grow up, have structure, like, do what I was supposed to do. Like, I got my first phone when I was in foster care. I was working two jobs. I was just trying to make something of myself. Like, I wanted to graduate high school, like. It was like basic things like that. Like I didn't have my mom. My mother wasn't there. She was never there for me. So it's like I always had to work. I always had to hustle. I always had to do my own things. Always buy my business. <laughs> because you learn that. Mind your business. Don't open your mouth. Don't say shit. If you're not in it, don't say shit. I grew up like that because... You don't want to get yourself in any kind of mess. I knew that. I grew up like that because living with eight different girls, eight different personalities, you learn. Like, up, uh, don't say nothing. You don't know nothing. You don't see nothing. And you can be right there. <laughs> you don't see shit. That's just what it is. And what else? And the spirituality, I didn't start getting into it. I wasn't religious. <laughs> when I was in the group home, I wasn't religious. I wasn't going to church. I, was, I wasn't doing nothing. I wasn't doing nothing like that. But when I went to college, that's when I started getting into witchcraft. And then you in college, I went to Sullivan County Community College, SCCC. And that was a dorm. That was a community college that had a dorm. So I was in a dorm and I would look up stuff on witchcraft. So I made my own book of shadows and everything. And this was in high school. No, this was in college. And that's when I started getting into witchcraft and the herbs and the oils and all that. I had to teach myself. I taught myself. And that's when I started getting into it because it was like I was confused in what to believe in and what to do. So I just did my own thing and I studied, I always studied, I always looked up stuff, always on the computer Googling and printing and I was 
I was always like that. <laughs> I was just always like that. So now I'm older and I still look up stuff. And uh, it, if I had a printer, I would print. <laughs> but I don't have a printer, so I write everything down in my notebook. And, and that's it. So I just wanted to talk about my group home experience. Well, my life. <laughs> that was a big part of my life was being in foster care. And and I turned out okay. <laughs> I'm not bad. I'm not, I think I turned out okay. And that's it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking on the video. I just did not want to not mention being in foster care, being in Catholic Guardian Society, because that was a big part of my life. I spent a lot of time there. I grew up there. The girls are a big part of my life. My foster mom, Miss Davis, is a big part of my life. And she helped me, instilled in me certain things that I do now that is because I was in foster care. Like, I have rules. We have restriction. Restriction is punishment. <laughs> like, that's what they, well, that's what it was called. When you're on punishment, I'm going to put you on restriction. Oh, you can't do this. You can't use the phone. You don't get allowance for a week. Or you, you got to do a different chore. Like, if it was a house, we had the front yard, backyard. You got to clean the front yard every day. Or you got to take out the garbage every day. Like, it would be something. That would be restriction. That would be your punishment. I grew up like that. I grew up with allowance. Like, when I was with my mother, I didn't get no allowance. My mother did not care. But when I was in foster care... I got an allowance every week. I would, she would buy us clothes every year. She would buy us clothes, take us school shopping and get me school supplies. Like she would do all this stuff for us. And I'm just like, like this is what your parents are supposed to do. But you know, if you don't have your parent and your parent doesn't do it, then you don't know. But I learned all these things. It was because my foster mother <laughs> taught me these things or you know, I see her do these things for us. I'm like, we're not even her kids. But she would she would always look out for us. I've never went on vacation with my mother. Never went on vacation. She was always chasing men back and forth the United States. But we never went anywhere to have a good time. But I was in foster care. She took us to Virginia Beach. <laughs> like, we were in Virginia Beach. We stood in a hotel. Like, that was our vacation. Like, I still have those pictures and it was just like, wow, like, this is what it's like. Like, this is what it's like to be normal. Like, it was normal for me to be in a group home and to experience life. Like, that's how a normal life was supposed to be. I didn't have a normal life. I didn't have my mother. I didn't, I didn't grow up like a normal person would have grown up. Like, it was just different. It was an experience. But I'm thankful and I'm grateful for the experience. And Miss Davis and the girls and, you know, everybody. They're, they're just a big part of my life now. We're still friends today. So I just wanted, I did not want to act like I wasn't in foster care. Like, I, I grew up. That's how I grew up. Like, I'm, I'm from foster care. I'm from CGS, like <laughs> Catholic Guardian Society. Like, that's how I grew up. <laughs> and I may not sound like it or I may not, you know, because we grow up. Like, you grow up. You mature. <laughs> and you don't act like you're the same 15, 16 year old. You know, you are an adult. And you change. But I don't forget where I come from. <laughs> so that's, I just wanted to talk about that. I'm going 19 minutes in. So always leave with love. Thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking on my video. Happy Easter. Happy Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, right? <laughs> Bye.